So, journalism is an ever shifting and a changing in this world. And in this world, journalist isn't isn't afraid to break the rules because they want to know what happens next. So here, good morning, a warm good morning to all. My name is Rinoti Samuel and my team members meet Ms. Ruya Mary, Ms. Ruya Mariam, and we are from St. Bershman's Institute of Management Studies. And we are here so glad to meet the, the inspiring working woman entrepreneur who is working a lot to be in this position and still working to grow. So meet with a great energy the CEO of Malala Malala Online, Mrs. Maria Manan Matthew. So, hi, hi. <laughs> so, ma'am, uh, as Manorama, there's no need for an introduction. For Manorama, yes. So, so being a great in this, in, in this field, what was the reason to diversify it into an online platform? Digital. Um, so we uh, in Manorama, we diversified into digital 26 years ago in 1997, far before anybody even thought that digital would be important. Um, and it was, I've said this all over the place, it was a vision of the then chief editor, uh, Mr. K. M. Matthew, who felt that this is going to be the future of uh, Manorama. And uh, so he and uh, George Jacob were the ones who actually originally started the site in 97. I joined in 2001. Um, by which time uh, we had realized that um, there's a great potential for this product, especially for people outside of uh, Kerala. Uh, I grew up outside of Kerala um, and you know I, I still remember how my parents would wait for the Malala Manorama paper to come after four or five days and I, I, I just found amusing because you would think what newspaper you read after four or five days and that was at that time the biggest thing they would read was obituary you know Chadma Maha this thing to see who's died and it's okay even if it goes four or five days they want to know about it because they're so far away. Um, but I also realized, we also realized the connect which Manorma has with the uh, Malayalis um, as a habit. And so we started off at that point saying that, you know, let's connect with all the Malayalis who've gone abroad and outside the state. And there's so many of them, you know, and that uh, give them access to the product so that they know what is happening inside. And we truly believe that this is a product which will be the future of uh, Manorma because platform stage, it's not that it was going to be, uh, it's and, and it's not about, oh, Malala Manorama paper will stop or something like that. It's not. And even now, after all these years, you look at New York Times, you look at all the papers all over the world, it, the print version is going strong, so is the digital version. But digital version is an equally strong part because um, that has evolved. And as we saw then itself, that it was going to evolve to be a very important part of our user's lifestyle. So... Uh, before you would wait in the morning, you know, first thing you get up in the morning is you get your kapi and you get your patra. Now, before you even go up to that place to get your kapi and your patra, that phone is next to you. And you get up in the morning, you get up in the phone and before you, you know, get in the bathroom, you have the phone which, and you, you try to see what is the news. So, what we are trying to be with uh, Manorma Online at that point we said was there was a vision that this is going to be a product which is going to be uh, a significant impact on Manorma and we wanted to be very much a part of that user existence and user flow. Thank you. So, ma uh, my question is, uh, as we all know that Manorma Manorma is catering in services to different uh, sectors of the economy, uh, both to the youngsters and to the uh, elderly people. So, uh, what impact would you create with this new venture and how successful it has been so far? Okay, so Manorma itself was a product which catered the paper if you see and all the different publications that we have, whether it's Balrama or it is Karshagarshri or Bhasha Koshri, you'll see, see just think about all these different products, they cater to Avanita, caters to different people, different ages, different uh, uh, interest groups, different genders. Um, so. We wanted to replicate the entire Malayalam Manorma ecosystem into the digital world. And that's what we were trying to do. So we had created all these different products. So Manorma Online has news. It has, for example, in a digital app, we have something called Quick Reads. It's like an in-shorts version, which you know, people who don't have time, children who don't have time, they want to at least get that stuff and finish it off and get the news. Um, we have podcasts, we have videos. So there are some people who, uh, and I know of some people, especially kids, who can register better when it's listening. 
So we have podcasts for those, and some people find it visually more appealing to have uh, photo stories or infographics or videos. Um, so we do we have those. Um, then we have content which varies based on interest groups. So we have entertainment, we have food, we have travel. Um, we try to cover all the genres of. We have children, so we try and cover all the genres of interest, age group, um, and um, regions. So we also have very localized, hyper local product. So our Chutuvatam, for example, our site is all about um, each and every district, and even breaking it up in the districts into local regions. And also, uh, we have something called Global Manorama, which is all about outside of uh, uh, you know we have so many people in the US and UK and the Gulf and Canada. So we cater for each of those uh, regions as well. So this is something which you looked at as important. We saw it from the legacy product itself. The legacy product itself had that vision, and so the digital product was just that we wanted to be everything for a Malayali at any age group at any point of time in their lives, which also included services. So we also had things like we, um, you know, we started something called Horizon, which is all about education. So you can do K twelve, you can do different competitive exams, you can prepare. We have M for Marry, which is about you know you want to get married, you find somebody, and we are we're doing very well in that. And then after you get married, you need a house. So we have Hello Address for finding a house, or, you know, renting, buying, selling, whatever. And after that, there's something called Quick Care and Quick Doc. You need to go to doctors. You can find your doctor's book and appointment, or you can find any services from a plumber to an electrician. Um, that's Quick Care. So we've tried to kind of be useful to a Malayali in every which way that they want, whatever age group. Uh, and is there was there a second part of this question? No, the, that, that's all there is. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. And my question is, as we know that you have studied outside uh, India. And been a part of many companies like JP Morgan. So, what made you admire this manorama, our Naden manorama online? Like, are you like, ha- have you continued just because your father is there, or what made like what admires you more? Okay, uh, first of all, small correction: not my father, my father-in-law. Mm-hmm. Uh, I grew up in the north, in Delhi and Bihar. My father is an IAS officer, um, and uh, I studied. Uh, up to my undergrad in Stevens College, I did my economics in Stevens. Um, so I, I, but my connect with Manorma was that I would see my parents. I was fascinated by how my parents would wait for this newspaper for so many years, right? Um, subsequently, I went, went abroad for my MBA, and I worked with J.P. Morgan. I worked with Chase, and which became J.P. Morgan. And a lot of stuff we did at that time was, you know. That time was a web 1.0, you know, everything was new and everybody was in. So the bank was also trying to change. There were so many things which was happening. And so I got to get a good view, a ringside view of what was happening with that version. We got a lot of training. We got to spend a lot of time doing a lot of um, projects based on that. Um, we call ourselves eventually uh, Lab Morgan, which is a group which is more about, you know, looking at these things. So. Therein was my background in this, uh, you know, kind of understanding what was going on. And uh, media was always fascinating. So I always loved uh, New York Times was my favorite newspaper. And I always loved, uh, you know, spending a lot of time uh, in uh, on news sites and newspapers. I mean, I think we, in, even in our house growing up, my father was such a newspaper person that he would have some 10 newspapers in our house. And he insisted, even though we didn't want to read the newspapers when we were young, he would insist that we had to. So I was always fascinated by this side of the business. And when I came to India and I was given this challenge, um, you know, that, you know, why don't you look at the digital aspect of Manorma? It was a challenge because at the end of the day, nobody in 2001 wanted to do digital. And everybody thought you were a nutcase if you were doing digital. Because you know, even, even here when people would talk and I had a team member, we were with three or four people in our team. And I remember they would come to me and say, you know, um, Anu, ma'am, uh, you know, this when I go for lunch, everybody's making fun of me that I'm doing something digital. What is this digital? Nobody knows what because people would not see it here. So the connectivity was so bad. So most of the people we were connecting was outside. So in India, even within the office, not many people had access. So it was a, it was a, it was a fun challenge. Um, and I think the best part of this, and I think one of the reasons why the job I took also was, best part of this is that um, nothing is constant in this job. Every day is a challenge. A new challenge every day. Every day it's either a challenge from within or from outside. Every day there are hundreds of new products coming in, new technology coming in. And 
you know, if you think you're up there one day, you're definitely down there the next day. So it's, it's like this, right? So it's fun because it's constantly using your mind is constantly has to work and it has to work fast and it doesn't get boring. Uh, and, you know, when it doesn't get boring, it's fun, at least for me. Uh, and, and I always tell people who come and work with Manorma Online, and I said, you know, you must come here because you have a passion for this product and you enjoy the fact that it is not a regular nine to five job. It's a job which is constantly whizzing out and you have to enjoy the thrill or the fun of change all the time. So ma'am, uh, as a woman and entrepreneur, you are so inspiring and a role model for us. Uh, so how do you maintain, uh, as we know that you have a beautiful family, so how do you maintain uh, your work-life balance? With a lot of support. So. Uh, I think there's a saying that it takes a village to bring up a child and it really does take a village to bring up the child. I was fortunate. I had, uh, when my children were born, um, my husband's uh, grandfather, Mr. K. Matthew, um, he was uh, he was like, you know, it's fine. You're busy. And I was busy relaunching the products and doing some things. He's like, have your kids. I will look after you. Go back to work. So, I mean, and he was in his 90s, you know, at that point of time or late 80s. And he was still like, you know, you come and nurse and you go back to work. So I had him, my my husband's parents were, you know, very close by. And uh, I mean, I had the whole, uh, I had an ecosystem, which is worse comes to worse. My parents would come or I would send the kids there. And um, and most most importantly, I had a husband who supported me. So, you know, at, at any point of time, there were times when I had to be at work that he would take time off from work and say, you know what, I will look after the kids. Um, and it's it's a challenge because first you know in those days there were not that many people, women who would work, and then you would always get this oh when you're when the child when you're working the child is not going to be okay, uh, blah blah blah. And I think at that point my hus- husband would be very clear about his sickness. Are they saying that I'm a bad parent? <laughs> who are these people who are talking about you? Are they saying they're bad? So when you have such a support system, uh, I think it's uh, much more easier to be a woman entrepreneur. Um, and so I was lucky and fortunate in that way. Uh, you know, in Manorma Online, we have more than 50% women. Uh, not by design or by choice, but you know, they're just, they're just brilliant women who are working here. And I have been constantly amazed at how they have managed to do such a beautiful job out here, despite the fact that they also have a beautiful family. And I think probably they're not, they don't have as many people to support as much as I have, but... I, I, you know, there was a, there's a person who heads our M for Mary. Um, you should actually meet her. She's a lady called Smita Vasudevan. And she's so, she and I had a child together. And I would see her, you know, how, that product grew while she was, you know, had these infants. And, you know, I think women can do it all. They just need a little support. And also, more than anything else, they need to ask for help. I think a lot of times we women think, that only we should do everything ourselves. You ask, they'll give. Everybody is willing to help, but you just have to ask for help also. Sometimes we we ourselves as women, you know, slot ourselves thinking that we have to do everything. We don't have to. We have a lot of good people around us. Use their goodness and ask them to help us. Okay. Thank you, man. So then uh, you always said that there was up and down in your life. So you faced a lot of challenges, right? Yeah. So you had a lot of experience. So what are the advices you'd like to give to those who venture in this field? Um, don't be afraid of challenges. Don't be afraid of getting rejected. Um, failure is good because it teaches you so many lessons. So the most important thing about failure is to spend time on the failure and understand what mistakes were made and then try and resolve it. Um, I think don't sit and rest on your laurels because if you've done well, it's ephemeral, it's only for a short time, something new will come. So don't just sit there and say, oh, I'm number one, I've got the best side. I say, no, how do you improve? How do you keep on moving forward? That is uh, that is very important. And uh, team, 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 it's not about you. You have to keep that ego aside and uh, it is about the team. And the more the team interacts and more people are part of this thinking process, you get a better product as opposed to you just being the one person. It can never be a one person show. It has to be a, a, a team which finally makes a difference. So, and like I said, it's, you know, the worst mistake is to not make mistakes. So I tell everybody that, you know, 
try experiment as much i tell my children also you must experiment don't worry even if you fail you know go and do something only if you do something will you know if you're good at it or not in your mind you may think you're good or bad at a lot of things if you try it you might be brilliant at it or you might be dear at it but figure it out do it if you don't make the mistakes you will always have that what if in your head what if i had done it and the other thing is you will make 100 mistakes before you get that one success and that's all that's fine don't get yourself down by it you will go down also but learn to get up you will feel miserable and that's perfectly fine to feel miserable about your mistakes i mean when we first launched manorama online when i first came and you know i come from america and everybody had a lot of expectations we had this huge town hall and and uh, you know we were supposed to announce this big you know thing that manorama was doing going into the digital world and everything collapsed that day like literally everything <laughs> collapsed out then the three of us were like what do we do i said first we'll go and pray first thing we'll do is everybody just go and pray and then write down what we have to fix fix it and sometimes when you do that you you write down a hundred things and you start solving the easier ones then you feel oh my god okay now it's, it's not 100 it's 95 because the five easy ones have been finished off so then at least you feel better you know so you keep on so you have to do that um i think these are the lot of little little lessons i've learned in life which i hope um others also learn and do uh i actually my question was i was curious to know about uh, if you uh, being a woman have you faced any difficulty was you but you have already said that you have got a lot a lot of difficulties um i mean as a woman you face a lot of difficulties sometimes which is uh sometimes which people think are obvious and sometimes which are not obvious and and the, these are challenges that you face from day one uh you know um my father uh, was a bihar ka raya so so and he had two girls and so when we were in bihar when people came to his house to our face people would come and say oh my god poor you you have only two girls what will you do you know and my father would just kick them out of the house literally say you know my two girls will be better than the two boys or three boys that you have and do not ever and so he always brought us up with that feeling that no matter what we were equal to anybody else and so i think that kind of uh, self confidence when you get when you uh, when your parents give that to you and my mother was a very capable woman and my father even though she was a house homemaker my father gave her all the freedom in the house to do with everything so the person who was you know who retired as secretary of civil aviation air india chair person and all that when he never he had never more than 10 rupees in his wallet because everything was given to my mother my mother managed everything he didn't even know what was going on i mean that kind of freedom he had given my mother to uh, to so we saw, we grew up seeing that so we realized it i mean uh, challenges will come you know i have as a woman sometimes when you are assertive i have been called an aggressive north indian i don't know what all words i've been called to my face <laughs> I mean, some lots behind my back, which you know you can't do anything about. But to my face, I've been called it. I mean, and as long as you can take it with a joke and a laugh and get on with it, life because you don't let other people define you. You define yourself. That's what is important. But challenges as a woman you face, yeah, definitely more than men. Ma'am, as you have said, you have a lot of um, experiences in your life. Can you please, as a fresher for us, can you please give your most important advice or share a piece of information that uh, we for our future or like something? I mean, I think that's all. This is that basically go out there and try your best at whatever you want to do. Follow it with a passion. Don't leave anything half baked. That's one thing. For if you want something, you follow it with a passion. and then you also sit back and assess whether it's working for you if it makes you happy ultimately it has to make you happy and the otherwise find something which will make give you that happiness that is important um you could be that person who you know uh my sister for example she is uh, she's brilliant she was much smarter than me um, she was a lawyer she uh, also went to america and studied um uh, after st stevens and she got into the best law firm in the in the country in america and she worked for many years and then she just gave it all up and she's now an artist 
um, because she said, I've had enough. I don't need to prove myself to anybody. I don't like that lifestyle. I love this better and I found this. So um, follow your passion. I mean, that, and don't worry about change because change is part of life. Embrace change, which is important. Embrace your mistakes and failures. Have you like felt any at any point of life, I've had enough? <laughs> Like, like how yeah, saying. no. <laughs> I, unfortunately, I keep thinking, you know, I keep telling my children sometimes, I said, I'm done, I'm done, I can't. They're like, they're like Amma, if you're done, you're going to drive us nuts. Please don't say you're done. Because honestly, I think it's also because I don't have very many talents. See, I can't paint or sing or do any of those things. But I can do this. I know I'm good at this. Or at least um, I, I try to be good at it. Um so yeah, um, I haven't felt that because I still enjoy what, more than anything else, I enjoy what I'm doing. I, I'm still as passionate about the stuff that I'm doing today as I was when I joined this company in uh, 22 years ago. Uh, so I still love it. And the minute I stop loving it, I, I will stop doing it. And that's for sure. Is it something you do to like loving it every day or it's just going with the flow? No, like I said, it's because it's it's the nature of the job. It's so, my, I love the um, adrenaline, this thing of the whole up and downs. So the good days and the bad days, and you know the the, you know the high pressure uh, which goes on, and you know some things. Sometimes I think, oh my god, how can we manage this? Happen? But I thrive in that kind of a situation. I like those situations, despite the fact that I might moan about it at that point of time. <laughs> but I enjoy it. So so yeah. That's what keeps me going. Uh, it's the passion of the job. So, ma'am, uh, as we all know, the technology is growing so fast. Now, mm -hmm. even children, even they won't read right now. It's, they have everything in their phone, even Kindle over there. So, do you think uh, for the next generation, people would forget the old madam and my paper? You know, I don't know because there is that uh, they've been talking about this for so long. I mean, I remember when I. But 10, 15 years ago when iPad came and we had this whole, there was a person who made, I forgot this presentation, I would put it in all the, uh, my presentations, which would say the lights off in the last, this thing would be in 20, 20 something in China and India and blah, blah, blah. It hasn't, I mean, and America was long ago. America still reads newspapers. There are people who are still reading newspapers. I mean, the people, it's not that they read, as many of them are reading it, but they're probably watching the digital version. Kindle, for example, you talked about Kindle and everybody said that that's the end of books. But you know, in the last few years, people have started buying more books. Actually. So things are not, uh, it's not as simple as it sounds, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, this will go away, that will go away. Look at, for example, radio. When radio started, when TV started, uh, you know, people said that radio will go away. Uh, radio is there, now you have podcasts, but you still have radio, you have different. So I think there is an... Um, it may not become obsolete. I mean, I think there's a place for every medium. It's going to find different places for different people. And it will, it will not be for everybody, but it will be for a certain niche audience. There will always be a want for that product. That's what we hope and we think. But yes, <laughs> as, of now, as of now, that's showing that it's doing that. Oh, so. so I'll continue to conclude with a funny question. Mm -hmm. uh, I've read an article, so are you still committed with your coffee? Does your day start with the coffee? Yes. Oh my God, I love my coffee. <laughs> I love my coffee. Yes. Uh, I, I went to a place called Prakriti Shakti and they told me, you know what, uh, coffee, whatever, whatever. But then they said, okay, fine, have your coffee, but reduce your amount. So I'm much better about reducing it. But I go to sleep at night and I kid you not, I go to sleep at night and I dream of my morning cup of coffee. <laughs> it's that much. I am so passionate about my coffee. So yes, I love my coffee. Yes. All right. Great. Thank you. All the best, all three of you, and whatever you're planning to do. Um, follow it with a passion and enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah. Good.